Noita left Early Access two months ago, and so it's time now for the first Tips and Tricks video covering some of the new content added in this massive update. As with all my other Tips and Tricks vids, some of the tech described in this one deals with potentially spoilery content, so viewer discretion is advised. In one of the post 1.0 patches, the Heesey were given a weakness that many of you might not know. That weakness being Toxic Sludge. Making Toxic Mist on triggers an extremely viable solution for dealing with Heesey Base, especially because of its tight corridors, since it will straight up melt 95% of enemies in here. The best part is that the healers do not share this weakness, allowing you to clean out everyone else while keeping them alive. The large drills in Heesey Base can actually be activated if you have a source of electricity and as long as there is fuel in the tank. A series of plasma beams will appear and extend downwards from the bottom of the drill as the fuel burns. This will destroy the gold, but also anything else in their way, potentially allowing you to drill through the brickwork down to the jungle. Omega Sawblade is one of the deadliest spells in the game, not only to enemies, but also the player. You can, however, modify it with Nala to keep it from damaging you while retaining its ability to dig through literally anything. Physics kills are a very powerful tool in the early game. Normal rocks will do decent damage when falling on enemies, however, you can modify them with Burst of Air to cause them to fly faster, dealing more physics damage. We can take this one step further by putting a Speed Up modifier at the front, causing the rocks to fly very quickly. They fly so quickly that they sometimes fail to strike targets, but when they do hit, they deal a lot of damage especially for early game. As a bonus, Burst of Air also reacts with fire, allowing you to create a makeshift flamethrower. Fire can be useful, of course, because setting enemies on fire keeps them from attacking you. Speaking of physics kills, you can use a combination of Chaotic Polymorphine and Emerald Tablets to acquire potentially a lot of gold early by polymorphing enemies into potentially more powerful enemies and then quickly killing them with a good tablet throw. This could be very dangerous, so I'll let you weigh the pros and cons, but the option is there. A few enemies you do not want to throw physics items at are these guys, the Masters of Wounding, these guys, the Masters of Twitching, and these guys, the Masters of Grounding. They all have a field around them that instantly disintegrates physics objects like tablets or even runestones. One of the other wizard masters, the Master of Returning, has a unique ability of mimicking nearby projectiles, even healing bolts. So you can use them to heal you as well. Just make sure there are no other enemies around whose projectiles might be copied while you're trying to get healed. Chaotic Transmutation combined with Dormant Crystals is a very nice way of obtaining certain materials. Each crystal will always transmute the same material, so the first one will always make whiskey, this second one will always make burning powder, etc. However, the more of these crystals you have laying around, the slower the game will get. So cleaning them up with dormant crystal detonation will be important in recovering your frame rate. If you ever find yourself a little bit short of gold, there are small caves containing piles of gold powder that have a chance to spawn on the sides of certain biomes, such as the Fungal Caverns or Temple of the Art. These piles contain about 600 gold and can be a nice little bonus if you happen to spot one. Using exactly three long distance casts on a teleport bolt will allow you to teleport into the eye above the leftmost side of Holy Mountains, which allows you to then travel up to any level you want without digging and angering the gods. This might not be the most useful tip for most of you, but I thought it was interesting enough to include. Besides, long distance cast teleports are a really nice way to travel. One of the perks that might not seem very useful at first glance is Gas Fire, which instantly ignites any nearby gases. This perk is, however, extremely useful, especially when combined with fire immunity, for exploring the sky biomes. Since the clouds that are otherwise pretty treacherous to traverse are composed of gas and immediately ignite around you, allowing you unrestricted access to the contents hidden within these biomes. And now we get to the pit boss, the connoisseur, the chasm boss, squidro, whatever you want to call it. It's one of the most dangerous encounters in the entire game, if not the most dangerous, and a lot of you have asked about how to kill it. 
Well, Giga Black Hole is a spell that doesn't get used nearly enough, and it's actually very, very effective against bosses. Here's a wand build I saw from Discord user Space Brother that looks amazing, and now I will demo it for you. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Watch as the black hole and the arrows rip it to shreds. The light show at the end is the icing on the cake. Damage Field is another extremely effective method to kill it, but because Damage Field hits extremely quickly, you'll want to take cover to avoid the rapid-fire projectiles the boss shoots at you as a result. But now for my personal favorite method. It's my favorite because of its pure simplicity of power. All you'll need is a square barrier, spells to power, and a simple spark bolt. The spells to power modifier isn't too rare, so you should be able to find it without too much of a problem. It'll actually draw power from every single pixel of the square barrier to supercharge the spark bolt, resulting in that. Almost a one-shot. Let's just cast another square barrier and then boom, it's dead. Obviously, you want to make sure you don't touch your own square barrier, but wand loadouts using it and spells to power are my current favorites because they make it feel like you're conjuring something instead of just firing a simple wand. Finally, we come to a curious little thing that was added in yesterday's beta. So unless you're using the beta, this will not be in your game yet. How do you access the beta? In Steam, just find Noita in your library, right-click it, go down to Properties and click that, then go over to the Betas tab, click that, and you'll see this little drop-down box where you can access the beta branch of the game. Just click Update and you'll be in the beta, with access to all the newest content immediately. Anyway, so combining Unstable Teleportatium with Flamuxium has a new effect. It creates Guiding Powder which will cause multicolored plumes to fire out and point you in the direction of the closest orb room, maybe helping you find them for the very first time, or helping you cut down on a lot of the time when trying to find all the New Game Plus orb rooms for a 33 orb run. Anyway guys, that's all for now. If you have any interesting tips and tricks, be sure to put them down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.